Hey there, YouTube. Figured I'd just make a quick little video here. I was uh, went over to the thrift store that had the uh, late 70s, uh, what was it, a Krumar orchestrator. It was a synthesizer that I really wanted. It was fucking mint. Uh, the, the price dropped today, and I didn't make it out early enough, or maybe someone picked it up on Saturday. and Yeah, it, it wasn't there. I'm, I'm really disappointed about that. But I did find this... Uh, it's a compact, like a 19-inch LCD flat panel monitor for, I don't know if this will focus close enough, $2.98 if you can see that. Took it up to the counter and she was like, I don't know if that price is right. And I was like, I don't know if that price is right either. But anyway, uh, basically the problem that I'm assuming is uh, the problem with it, because it does not work, it will not power on, is uh, capacitors. And uh, let me zoom in here and I will show you what I mean. We noticed that a couple of these capacitors don't look right. Um, if we look at this one, it looks nice and flat. But this one, it's got kind of a dome to it. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not too well. But basically this capacitor and this capacitor and this capacitor and this capacitor have all popped. They're all blown. Uh, and uh, especially on a power supply board, when those, when the capacitors blow, you're going to have some funky shit happen. Basically, it's either not going to work at all, like in my case, or uh, it might work for a couple seconds, or it might shut off randomly. Uh, any whole number of power-related you know, seeming issues are going to pop up when, when capacitors blow. But uh, it's a really cheap fix. These things cost, you know... A dollar or two, maybe a maximum of three bucks for like one of these big ones, but luckily that one seems to be just fine. Uh, just to buy, you know, a couple capacitors. You can uh, find them in, you know, Radio Shack and uh, your local electronic stores generally. Um, and they're pretty easy to remove. You just have to go to the back, like uh, this one right here. If we look over here, it's going to be these two solder points right there. So you basically uh, liquefy one with your soldering gun and kind of rock it so that it pulls that pin out. Let it let that solder point uh, cool off and solidify, and then you know melt the other one and rock it the other way and just kind of slowly rock it back and back and forth until you can get it out. Uh, and then putting the new one in is pretty easy. You're just sticking the pins through and re-soldering it on there. But uh, yeah, it's a really simple fix. Sometimes you can find stuff. People just give you things that are broken like this, basically. And, uh, you know, it only costs, you know, five, ten bucks to fix it, so... Uh, I don't know. Another thing you want to do, obviously, is get the right capacitors. Um, if we look at this one, it says... 1,000 UF 16 volts, which is 1,000 microfarads, I believe. Uh, there's microfarads and there's picofarads on these big, uh cylindrical ones like this. These are called electrolytic. Uh, they're generally going to be in a large microfarad number with the little U on there. And uh, the voltage isn't a huge problem as long as you have... Um, you don't want to go under on the voltage. You can go a little bit over. You can go, you know, like I can easily put a 35 or a 50 volt one probably in here. Uh, but the only problem with that is it's probably going to be a larger diameter just because of the, you know, uh, higher voltage it can it can attain, uh, so that's that's really a minimum voltage. Um, I've heard some people say, "Oh, don't don't double the voltage or quadruple the voltage or something like that." I'm not sure what the what the actual stipulation on that rule is, but uh, in my experience, I've I've replaced uh, you know 35 volts with 50 volts, and they've worked just fine and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, 1,000 microfarads isn't going to be very hard to find. Uh, See what's this other one? That one is another 1,016 volt. This one right here can't quite see. I get the light on it. Right. Uh, looks like that one is a 470 microfarad 16 volt, and I believe this one's probably the same. Can't really see it. Yeah, that one's also a 470. See there. So I just need a, for this project two 470 microfarads uh, with a minimum of 16 volts. 
and uh, two 1000s, and those should be relatively easy to find. Uh, I might have to order the 470s, I think. Um, just depends on what, what the local electronics store has. Um, depending on what I'm doing at work today, I'll try and uh, make it to one of those little mom-and-pop stores. I think we've got at least one in, in town. They close at 5, though, so it's going to be a little tricky getting there. And they have a really big selection, you know, in comparison to uh, Radio Shack or something like that. So, um, And plus, Radio Shack's generally a little bit more expensive. They'll they'll charge you 2 or 3 bucks for something that you can get, you know, off the Internet or at a local little small shop for a buck. So uh, I'm going to see if I can knock my way over there, and hopefully this will uh, be fixed within the day and I will have a you know ten dollar at most uh, 19 inch flat panel so <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I'll probably uh, actually think I'm gonna take it to work because I don't have very much desk desk space over there I've got a 17 inch uh, flat screen CRT on my desk because that was the best thing I could find lying around and uh, my desk is only two or three feet deep <laughs> so it basically takes up almost all of it and barely barely leaves room for a keyboard which kind of blows especially since everyone else has flat panels and I'm just kind of the bitch there so <laughs> you'd th you'd think the IT guy could get some good good computer equipment but uh you know I don't really want to ask I'd rather salvage pull things out of closets and slap them together so <laughs> anyway uh just to kind of reiterate you know you've got a you've got a kind of complex electronic item this is a you know an LCD monitor so and uh, it's you know something something related to power seems to be off it's just not powering on or it's not staying on or it's you know doing something funky related to staying on or even even just weird you know if you if you have a, a monitor or something and maybe not a CRT because those are I wouldn't I would stay away from working on those they're pretty dangerous unless you know what you're doing but I mean even even if this had some you know lines on it or you know, the picture wasn't right, the color wasn't right, something weird that I couldn't fix through the, you know, on-screen display. I'd probably look through here, which is, you know, probably the uh, video actual circuit. You can see there's plenty of capacitors under there. Any of, any one of those could be a problem for, you know, a video problem of, uh, you know, lines or, you know, something like that. So, it, you know, it goes to, uh, pays to, you know, check these things out. Especially uh, if something goes out on you, you know, maybe it's just a couple dollar fix uh, instead of just throwing it away or, you know, <laughs> donating it to the thrift store like someone did here. Um, but yeah, capacitors are notorious for going bad. Uh, you know, it's just kind of random on a lot of, on, a, on some electronics. Some, some things are, uh, I think Luke has a video for his, uh, what is it? PC Engine GT, the little handheld PC Engine, I think that's what they call it, right? I'm trying to think of what the Turbo Graphics is. Is the Turbo Graphics one a Turbo Graphics Express? Whatever. Anyway, the little handheld PC Engine is, you know, has capacitors go out in it all the time. The, the you know, the video circuit, the audio circuit, and it's, you know, just a few dollars to fix those things. Um, I know the Sega Game Gear has the same problem. It'll have a uh, capacitor go out on the video display and your contrast will be, you know, basically fixed in some horrible position where you can't see the screen at all unless you look at it at the perfect angle or uh, the uh, the uh, audio circuits have capacitors and stuff go out in them all the time or uh, I guess fuses as well are, is a big problem and I was hoping maybe that there would just be a little inline fuse in here that I could quickly switch out but looks like it's going to be slightly more complicated than that uh, which isn't a problem at all um, it is also possible that uh, these capacitors are a result of another problem. Uh, I'm going to have to look up, see if I can find a schematic or, you know, scrounge around this thing for a little bit, see if there are any fuses. Um, sometimes fuses are uh, kind of uh, disguised as resistors, kind of like that. I'm not sure exactly what those are off the top of my head. Um, and... Uh, Capacitors, another, another quick note is uh, these little tower ones. They also have a polarity that you want to make sure you pay attention to. If you look at them, they have a stripe on one side. There's a stripe here, there's a stripe there. This one has it on the opposite side, this one has it on the opposite side. And if you look on the circuit board, hopefully, there's a little positive sign, which is on the opposite side of that stripe. So that's a negative. The ground is that stripe. 
and you want to you always have to put those in the right way so you might even mark on your board with a permanent marker when you take them out to uh, uh, get them in the right way so 